This is the Leadership Underground Movement, episode four. Thanks for coming, spending some time with me. My name is Jeremy Sanders, and really look forward to what we can gain and learn from each other, especially in this project. So for those of you that have not listened to previous episodes, number one was an introduction. Number two, we talked about the importance of putting our crews first, putting our people first. Whoever you are leading, putting them first and the benefits that, that are a result from that action. Number three, we talked about building relationships, building respect and trust as a leader with your people. And so, you know, very important stuff, in my opinion, as far as what we need to be working on, learning and doing as leaders. And episode four is absolutely. If, if not as important, maybe even more important. And, and why I say that is because we're going to be talking about mission slash vision statements. And I feel like without some type of a mission statement, vision statement, whatever you want to call it, you just don't have a target. You don't know what you're aiming at. And so I think it's a very, very vital piece of this whole big picture. And so we'll get into that. So a little, a little backstory on kind of why I feel that this is so important before we get started. And, and I, I personally think that this is something that we really need to, to get going early. You know, this isn't something that we need to start thinking about a month or a week out of getting promoted into a formal spot. We need to have these things. We need to be working through these things in our mind well in advance so that you know, we're, we're giving ourselves time to, to truly lay out what we want, not just rushing through it. So personally, I know I've, I've been in a fire service for 19 years, which is one department. It's the only department I ever applied for. I've been an officer 10 of those years, and the last three I've spent as a captain, which is our station officer. So before that, the last 10 years, when I was just a driver, I had no formal leadership role. I really began to start thinking about these things, thinking about, you know, if, if I ever get the chance to become a station officer, what do I want that to look like? You know, what do I want my crew to, to look and feel like, you know, and I didn't know the word at the time, but what did I want the culture to look like? You know, that, that word is really relatively new to me in, in this kind of aspect, you know, I didn't really understand the 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 mindset of of culture in the fire service and so i knew i knew of it i just didn't correlate what i was thinking to culture but anyway so that started a process it started a very very long process you know a couple years worth of ideas and thoughts and and putting it into a a computer document and just kind of changing it as i go and as I learned and grew more, it would change and evolve. And so long story short, by the time I was getting really close to promoting, I had pretty much my vision statement mapped out, laid out, you know, maybe a couple tweaks here and there to, to really polish it out, but it was all set up. And I didn't have to rush to, to kind of create something. And so I think it's, it's a very important thing to have and, and start working on it early. I don't care if you're just a firefighter and, and you may be you know, two or three ranks away from being a formal leader. It's, it's not too early to start writing this down. And having a, a document electronically that that you can go in and change and and adjust is awesome because you know, it's nice to like i said the firefighters it's nice to be with somebody as a leader and think you know i love 
how they handle these situations. I love how it makes me feel as, as their subordinate when they handle a situation like this. Well, that is a perfect chance to sit there and write that stuff down because really what you're saying is this is how I want to lead. When it comes my turn, this is how I want to do it. And the same goes for the opposite side of that coin. You know, if you are in a situation where you are not having a good time, if you do not enjoy your leadership or your leader's style of leadership, that's great stuff to write down as well, you know. And basically, just like I said earlier, but the flip of it, what you're saying in that that aspect is I don't want to lead my people like this. I don't want to treat my people like this when it comes time. And so that's what I did. And, you know, and like I said, it evolved over time. And even once I became a lieutenant, our lieutenants are officers, but you're, you're not really in charge of anybody. You're, you're on a truck or a rescue, or you're taking the place of a station officer when they're gone. So you're, you're kind of a, a substitute teacher type role. Even, even when you're on a truck or rescue, you're still under a captain. And so realistically, you're not in charge of anybody, but that was a good time for me to keep evolving the mission, keep evolving that vision statement of mine. And so that's what I did. And I'm very glad I did because, you know, all those years ago, it, that laid the, the groundwork of the, the mission that I work off of right now. And so has it changed a lot in those probably 12 years now? Absolutely. I'm, it's, it's, changed, it's changed a lot just in the past three years, to be honest with you. But that's the great thing is when you have something like that accessible, accessible, <laughs> however you say it, when you have something like that, that you can get in there and you can change whenever you want to, it's very easy to let that document be fluid. And, and when you learn, when you grow, when your priorities change, you can easily go in, adjust that and, and just keep moving on. And I'll just give you one example of kind of where my mission statement has changed. And so, you know, like I said, I've been a station officer for almost three years, be three years in April, I believe. And so the mission statement that I had going into that, that first day, it, it basically part of the kind of expectations and, and kind of get to know me type area of it. I stated that I'm not a huge, I'm not big into training, but when we are involved in training. I want to have a all in attitude, a sense of urgency, and I want us to get the most out of it that we can. And basically, that's all it said. So basically, I'm not going to be doing a lot of on my own training. But when we do, let's have a great attitude. Let's do the best we can and get the most out of it. That's kind of what I was saying. Is that me now? <laughs> Absolutely not. You know, I'm the person that puts out the, the daily training schedule that, that I've put out there. I'm the person that, that tries to do something every day. I'm the person that wants to grow, wants to learn, wants to feel like I accomplish something every day now. That wasn't who I was back then. And that's, that's awesome. You know, that, that just means that I am growing. I am learning. I am I'm gaining something in those areas. And so that has helped me to really see kind of the, the progress that I've made. And so now, you know, when you look at my statement, it, it, that's, that's what we talk about. You know, it talks about we are going to do something every day. We are we're going to find something to do that's either physical, it's watching online classes it's being a part of some type of you know hands-on training whatever it is podcast listening whatever it is every day of the week we are going to be doing something because that's our goal is to learn and grow a little bit every day 
And I think it's pretty easy to pick out the, uh, the differences in those two mentalities right there. And you could very quickly say that that's almost two completely different people. And, and, and it, I would probably agree with you. I am a very different person than I was back then. Is that something to be embarrassed about? No, I'm, I'm proud proud of who I am, but I'm also proud of what I have been through and my growth and uh, proud of the, the ability that I have had to go through some down times, to make it through some unmotivated situations and truly turn that around into something that, that I have now. And so that is something that that I really, I try to share as much as I can is keep evolving, not only yourself, but that mission state, because as you evolve, as you change, as you grow, that mission statement needs to grow and change and evolve with you. So anyway, I say that to say that, that I, I feel like having a mission, having a vision is vital to your success as a leader. And it is vital to your success because it is your target. It is what you are aiming for. Everything you do as a leader should be pointed towards that mission. If you don't have a mission, if you don't have a vision, then how do you know where to aim? How do you know what to focus on as a leader? How do you know know, how to get where you want to go? And a lot of this is, is kind of intermingled and meshed together with culture, you know, creating the culture that you want at, the, at, at your firehouse, your crew. And so that's kind of the cliff note, maybe longer than it needs to be story of why I feel like having a mission is so important, especially when you step into that formal leadership role. And it's very important. And it will make your job easier when you get there if you started focusing on that as an informal leader, as a firefighter, as a driver, you know, up through your early years. So what I'll do now, just to kind of maybe help you out, if, if you don't really know what I'm talking about, if you don't really know where to start or, or maybe just need a little a little push to, to kind of understand exactly where I'm going. I'll just go through my mission, my vision statement. And again, I don't even know what to call it. I, I feel like every time I call it, it's something, it's, it's something different, but, and I, and I've reached out to, to others, you know, big names in the fire service of what you think this is, you know, I've, I've literally sent this to those people and, you know, is it, a mission statement is it a vision statement what is it and for the most part what i got is it, it's whatever you want to call it you know it, it's it doesn't matter the what matters is having it that's the important part and so i'll leave it at that i honestly don't care what you call it i i i, I don't even know what i rather call it like i said i switch back and forth but anyway so this is my personal mission statement for my crew and I basically break it down into four categories, four pillars, if you, if you will. So number one, and I'll go into to each of those a little bit more here in a second, but number one is take care of each other. Number two, do the right thing. Number three, help those we can help. And number four, have fun. So without going into any of these in depth, it, it, it's pretty basic, isn't it? It, there's nothing groundbreaking, nothing mind blowing there. It's basic stuff, but it covers so much. And it is such a great target for me as a leader to shoot for. So going into a little bit more in depth into these, and then that's kind of what I do, you know, on, in my document, I, I have these, these, these four pillars, and then I've got a few little explanations underneath, if you will, of, of how we're going to get there. So the first one is take care of each other. And I don't really have to get into this because what is that? That's literally episode two right there, you know, putting my people first, 
And obviously this is a, a mission for our crew. So it's not just my perspective. This kind of turns it into, we are all going to put each other first, but, but that's a, a lot of what I talked about in that second episode. But under that, I say, stay as prepared as possible. And I will, I will use this same one a little bit later here in a second as well. But if you think about it, you know, that is putting my people first. Me being as prepared as I can, me being as well-trained as I can, as ready as I possibly can be, that is putting my people first. Because if I am neglecting my fitness, if I'm neglecting my training, if I'm neglecting, you know, any of those things, they could come back to bite us. They could come back to, to hurt my crew. If I am not ready for something and something bad happens in a, you know, in a fire, whatever you want to call it. And I look back on that situation after somebody got hurt and think, you know, I didn't train at all in that area. I could have been more prepared. That is a conversation I do not want to have with myself or anybody else. I want to put myself in the best possible position to do everything I can and the best possible position of my crew to take care of them. So that's big right there. So Another thing, and this, this will require a little bit of explaining, so, but I talk about the red three. So my department, our shifts are red, green, blue. I am at station three, so we are red three. So when I first became a, a captain at my current location, I wanted to do some things to, to build some morale, to build some, you know, some uh, team pride, crew pride. And one of the things is creating big red three helmet stickers. And at first that was just, it was just something cool to have, you know, that just to, to show off who we are. And over this past year, I kind of decided, you know, this is something that we need to be proud to, to show off this. This is something to be proud of, to be a part of this crew. So it isn't something that you're just given. You have to earn the red three. And I know probably somebody might think that that's silly. You know, okay, it's a helmet sticker, big deal. These are the things that are big to me because it shows that you are committed. It shows that you are willing to work for something as a team, as a crew. And so I think it's an awesome, awesome thing. So just to, to kind of explain a little bit further, we just got a, a new fire, a new member to our crew this last week. He's not a new firefighter, but he's new to our crew. And so, you know, on the first day, we have challenge coins now with our, our station. And so as I met with him, I, I gave him a challenge coin. I gave him a, a nameplate to put in his bunker gear closet, which is an awesome bunker gear closet, which we are so proud of. And, and it is another symbol of our crew pride. I'll just say that as a side note. But uh, I give those things to him because that's part of being a member of my crew. I want you to have those to show my appreciation of you being here. But he did not get that red three. And that's what I told him is that's something that you will earn over time as you show your commitment to this team and, and your willingness to be a part of this team. And so I just feel like it's a cool thing to to strive for and i and i love symbols like i said you know the bunker gear closet the the red three the challenge coins that have a logo that we worked on as a as a crew as a basically you know all three shifts at the station we we work to create our own logo i love those things because those things are what keep us going those things are what keep morale up to keep the attitude positive that keep us united together and it's funny because they're just silly things, you know, stickers and coins and, and, you know, stuff that people from the outside think they're the stupidest things ever. But those are the things that we love that, that, that really 
bring us together and really fire us up and give us pride and ownership. So, you know, if that's the case, then why aren't we taking advantage of that? So anyway, getting, getting back into the take care of each other. The last one I have in there is build tomorrow's leaders. Oh, that's why we're here right now. That is why the underground project was established is to build tomorrow's leaders. That's how we take care of each other. That's how we take care of this fire service, making it better every day by building better leaders from the ground up. So wrapping that one up. So number the, the next one, and these aren't in order, you know, I, I just, I, I just have them. They're, they're four pillars. They're not, this is most important. This is the second most important. But the second one is do the right thing. Now, does that mean that we're always going to make the right choices? Does that mean that we're never going to mess up? Does that mean that we are perfect? No, we are going to mess up. You know, my crew had a pretty big mess up here just within this past week, something that we shouldn't have allowed to happen. Is, is that unacceptable? Well, it, it shouldn't have happened and, and we wish it didn't and we should have you know, done better, but we're people, we're humans, we're going to mess up. So out of that situation, I was so proud of my crew because we took responsibility for it. Even the people that sh shouldn't have had to take responsibility for it, the people that weren't even decision makers in that problem took responsibility for that and i can't tell you how impressed i am with that did that cause a rift in our crew did that cause bad feelings in our crew because somebody got in trouble and maybe they shouldn't have no absolutely not and again something that i am so very proud of because that very easily could have caused a big problem in some crews so I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud that I work with people with the care, level of character that can take responsibility for a problem, that can take ownership of that, that can apologize for it, that can step up and say, I want to do better. We can do better. We're going to learn from it. We'll take whatever punishment is coming and let's move on. That's the kind of people I want to be with. And that again is something i'm so proud to be a part of and so that's exactly the definition of this pillar is you know do your best to do the next right thing and so okay you mess up so what's the next right thing the next right thing to do is take ownership for it take responsibility P apologize to learn move on you know it's not saying you're not going to mess up. It's just saying, do the best you can to do the next right thing, no matter where you're at, do the next right thing. So next on that one, uh, and, and, and this is another big thing for me. If you see something that needs to be done, just do it. And, and this is something I've talked about on here. This is something that we talk about a lot at the station. And again, something that I have been very proud of my crew here lately on. If, if we get to the station and the rig needs gas, fuel, whatever, okay, let's go get it. If, if it's something that happens over and over again, you know, wear out the other crews, you know, make fun of them, whatever, that's fine. But let's get that over with and let's move on because it's not worth wasting a day griping about other crews not doing their job. It's not worth the negativity it's just not because i guarantee you there are things that that other crew gripes about you about every day there's something that you don't get done that they gripe about so to think that we are the only people having to pick up the slack of others that's it's just not right you know it, it if if the rig is dirty if if the floor has got leaves on it if the front apron is is got salt from the snow you know whatever it is let's just do it we're, we're there we're on duty that day let's just do it i don't want to be a part of a crew that i have to tell them hey the rig has been dirty for for three shifts 
you know, I understand that we're not the ones that, that made it dirty, but we've literally let it stay dirty for three shifts. We need to clean. I don't, I don't want to be a part of a crew that I have to tell them that. I want to be a part of a crew that they walk out there, they see it dirty, they know we need to clean that up because we're better than that. That's what I want to be a part of. That's what I want to create as a station officer. And so that's big to me, you know, and, and, I, and I hope that that's big to everybody because oh, this isn't our stuff. This is the, the equipment and the rigs and the stations of the citizens we serve. We have to treat it like it's theirs, not ours. Even if it is ours, you know, take ownership of things, make it nice, keep it clean, do your job. That's, that's what it comes down to. Just do your job. So moving on, number three, help those we can help. And obviously, again, another big one. You know, it's the, the them for them mission that you see a lot nowadays. And you, you shouldn't have to go into this much. And I don't really go into it much. And this is where I, I said earlier that I will get back into the, the staying as prepared as possible. This is another aspect of that. We have got to stay as prepared as we can, as well-trained as we can, so that when we are called upon to help our citizens, we can do it and get the job done and, and make things better. And that's, that's what it boils down to. We have to put ourselves in a position to succeed. We have to put ourselves in a position to be helpful when called upon. And another big one in that is serving with respect, courtesy, and compassion. Serving our citizens with respect, with courtesy, with compassion. Oh, I get it. We go on a lot of BS calls. I get it. We go on a lot of stuff. It's like you have four cars in the driveway and your toe hurts. Can somebody not bring you to the hospital that isn't an ambulance? I get it. I know the frustration, you know, for me, the most frustrating call of all, and this is something I have had to really focus on getting better at is that call that comes in about two minutes before my replacement comes. That's the most frustrating time for me. You know, some people it's during meals. Some people it's during workouts. Some people it's just getting woken up at night I, you know, whatever it is I get it we all have to do this we all have to deal with the frustration of running calls that we don't feel are necessary the problem is that's our job it, I don't it doesn't matter what it, the problem is it doesn't matter what the call is it doesn't matter what the time of day is it's our job to go help so let's go do it in the most respectful way we can, the most compassionate way we can, and the most courteous way we can. So I'll, that's, that kind of wraps that one up. And I'm getting into the last one, having fun, have fun. You know, obviously, that doesn't need a lot of explanation either. You know, I want to create an environment that we love to come to, period. That's, that's, it could all be summed up right there. And I say it over and over and over again. If you are making this job suck, you have got to be putting out a lot of effort to do it. You can't, this job doesn't suck unless you try to make it suck. It takes action to make this job suck. It is the most fun job in the world this is the best job in the world. So why are we making it any less than that? Make it fun. Enjoy coming to work, have fun with each other, harass each other. You know, that's the best part of this job. I would not like this job near as much. I don't even know if I could do this job if I didn't have fun. Because that's the best part of it. You know, yeah, we get to help people. That, that is amazing. 
that makes us feel great. It makes us feel like we're part of something bigger than ourselves. That is awesome. But being able to have a family, a second family that we can go hang out with a third of our lives, enjoy the company, laugh with each other, you know, cry with each other if we need to, pester and, and harass each other all day and enjoy every minute of it. That is when you're doing it right, right there. That's when you're doing it right. Something I, I have on there, and it's just kind of how I like to run it, is, is we're going to do is everything that we need to get done. We're going to try to get that done as fast as we can. Get it done, knocked out. Whatever training needs to be that we got on, let's do it in the morning. Don't wait till after lunch when everybody is, you know, their energy levels are down and, and nobody has the motivation. Get it done in the morning. Uh, clean up rig checks, whatever it is, let's get it done first thing. Because when we get that done, then we can relax. We can enjoy whatever we want to enjoy. We can hang out. We can study whatever it is. Get the stuff done that needs to be done, and then we're good. And I just feel like that is a great place to be. I have worked for the people that will find more busy work for you if you get done. And all that does is just makes you work less. If I'm going to do five things and get them done and then be able to, to relax the rest of the day, as opposed to if you give me five things and I get them done as fast as I can and is, and is in a good shape, I get them done and you go find five more things for me, okay, tomorrow I'm going to take all day to do that. that. That's a crappy, crappy mindset to have. So we don't need to foster that environment. We need to take care of our people. If, if our people work to get the jobs done, give them a break. Don't be looking for busy work to fill time. And last on that one, and this is, I cannot explain how huge this is. Focus on positivity. And I, I can't even tell you how many times I've said it lately. We are living in a very negatively charged world right now. Everywhere you look, it's like people just want to just pour negativity on you. And so it's never been more important to focus on the positive, spread the positive you know, it is very hard to be at a fire station for 24 hours when it's a completely negative environment. I literally feel like the life is being sucked out of me when I'm in an environment like that. And it is truly, truly amazing when you compare that environment to an environment where it's a positive environment and, and that negativity doesn't exist. It's, it's like I can breathe again. I, I I have a huge weight off of my chest. It's such a huge difference. And so we've got to focus on the positive. We've got to start sharing that positivity and, and make it a great place to come to work. So that pretty much wraps up my mission, my mission statement, my a little bit of the expectations. I, I hope that it helps you hope that you kind of see where I'm getting at as far as the importance of it. And because I feel like we, we have to have that target. We have got to create that target for us to know where we're aiming. And you know, doing these things is not easy. Doing them without direction is impossible. We have got to have some type of direction. So thank you. I, uh, again, I appreciate your time. I hope that it wasn't too noisy. I'm sitting here waiting on my kids to get out of an appointment. So I figure this is a good chance to do this. So I will be putting this out and hopefully get another live Facebook discussion over it. Have some really good discussions and a clubhouse discussion or two out of it. So I want to hear what your thoughts are. I want to hear kind of where you're at some maybe differences in, in your mission as 
compared to mine or whatever, whatever you want to talk about. Reach out to me over direct message or look for the live meetings and, and we'll talk it out. So thank you very much. Look forward to next time. As always, stay humble and do work.